Six years ago, I was fired from my boring office job and I went on to start a business. I had low confidence, no experience, but I really did not want another job like that. That very same business went on to generate millions of dollars, alhamdulillah, and now my whole life and vision for the future is completely different. The journey was long, there were ups, there were downs, and it was hard, but I think it was completely worth it. And I know that with the right mindset and the right work ethic, you can do it too, inshallah. So this is my full business journey with all the questions that you want answered, answered, especially if you're a Muslim man. Let's get started. So I was raised in the UAE. I went to school there, I grew up there. I actually even went to uni. I did my first degree in the UAE and I was on track for doing something in like urban design, town planning. I did not really like the idea of getting a job, but I thought, let's just be a bit patient here with this and go for it. And I actually had a passion for town planning because I'd seen in Abu Dhabi, there were these huge Vision 2030 stuff that they had and the plans looked amazing. And they just had unlimited money and this blank canvas of a city where they could just build whatever they wanted in the desert. And that was exciting for me. So I was looking at those plans and I was thinking, wow, I would like to make some plans like this in the future. So when I finished my degree in the UAE, I went to do a master's degree in the UK. And this starts part of my life where I was avoiding getting a job no matter what. I was lacking confidence. I actually thought I can't do a job. I've been to uni, I've graduated, I did pretty well in it, but deep down I had no confidence and I felt I can't do these jobs. I'm gonna be really bad. I was worried about the social aspect of things as well, where I was raised in the UAE and then going to the UK and studying, how am I gonna get along with these people, I, I, I'm not really used to the culture. And so that was a whole phase of just studying stuff and being in uni because I was comfortable with that. I was used to that. I've been doing that my whole life, studying. And so I kept doing that to avoid this elephant in the room, which was, you need to get a job someday. So I was in London studying. I got into UCL, University College London, which is like a top uni. But what that gave me actually is even lower confidence because the standards of the people around me were so high. A lot of them were many years older than me and they were just doing really well. And it wasn't that hard for them, but for me, it was hard. So I was in a top uni, I got in, but that made me feel worse because I seemed much less smart than the people around me. And as I met people who had actually worked in this industry, even more, I was feeling like I do not want to do this. And it was while I was studying in London that me and my roommate, Muhammad, we decided to go to this expo called Business London, something like that. And it was a huge exhibition all about business. And they had people like Richard Branson talking, and I think Bill Clinton and people like that. They came and they had all these speakers and we went there, right? We were generally interested in business. We didn't know much about any specifics, but we thought it's a good idea to do something of your own. And that was just the general vibe we went on. So we went there and it was free to get in. And we went and we listened to someone speaking. It was an American guy and Qatar Allah that we just ended up listening to this guy. And he was talking about affiliate marketing. We didn't fully understand what he was talking about, but I think it was the freedom he was talking about. It was about making money online. It was about making money while you sleep. And that was really attractive to us. He ultimately on that stage, which was a free talk, he sold us on, it was like a two day workshop in a hotel, you pay, and it was 150 pounds. But they said, if you buy one ticket, you get someone else can join. It was 150 pounds, which was a lot of money at that time. While I was living in London, I went there and I didn't have a job or anything like that. And my dad just said, how much money do you need to live? I had a bit of shame. So I was like, okay, what's the minimum I could live on? And I told him that number. I think it was 500 pounds a month. I told him that's what I need to survive. So I spent all of that, of course, very easily in a month in London. And people would even tell you that's impossible to live off in London, but I did it, alhamdulillah. 150 pounds was a lot of money. So the ticket for this workshop was 150 pounds. But they said, if two of you come, you can use one ticket. So me and my friend, we split it. It was 75 pounds each, which was a lot of money for information. We hadn't ever really spent that much money on this kind of education, apart from uni, of course. But this was something new to us. So we bought the ticket and it was a few weeks away. We spent Saturday and Sunday, the whole weekend, full days in this hotel kind of wedding hall. And we were there and he was just telling us all about affiliate marketing. He was talking about how to rank your blog posts high up on Google, not by paying ads, but by just ranking and using SEO, basically search engine optimization. And when you write these articles and you rank for it, you can put affiliate links 
in your blog posts and then people are going to buy and you're going to make money. And he was talking about ClickBank and all this stuff. This was really exciting. He was also talking about hiring assistants abroad where it's very cheap and you can get a lot of jobs done. This was a whole new world for us. We were like 20 years old and we were thinking about, whoa, I can hire someone? Like it's actually approachable for me to hire somebody. And remember, I'd never made any money at this point. The only work I had done, because in UAE, we can't really work, we're not really allowed to work. And it's not a culture where young people work. So all I had done was I was a steward at the F1, the Formula One in Abu Dhabi. That was the only work I had done because I was, as a lot of parents do, they're like, yeah, just focus on your studies. So that was the only money I'd ever made. And now he's talking about being able to hire someone. So this was very exciting. Ultimately, of course, he had a big upsell where it was like 10K dollars or something to work with him closely and get all of his advice. But I took a lot of things out of that. Mostly I took ambition. I was more ambitious. I knew I wanted to get some sort of online income. I knew that there was a huge world of possibilities out there. And I was ultimately really excited. And I just knew I wanted to do something in that direction. So I continued down my way. I was doing my studies and I actually started another degree after that. But during that second degree, it was actually a third degree at this point. During that third degree, I wrote an ebook because he was talking about ebooks and we were into productivity, me and my friend. So we wrote an ebook together to try and sell online. Now, ultimately, I would say we didn't give it our all and we weren't fully educated on, on exactly how to do it. So ultimately, we made like one sale from that ebook. I remember spending hours just trying to work out how to do a PayPal checkout. But this was the hours and the work that went into ultimately building my business down the line. Time went on and after my third degree, I still was not confident enough to even get a job and even apply for jobs. So I started to apply for basic jobs, jobs that even someone without a degree would be able to do and would be accepted to do. And I ended up getting a job in a library. While I was working in the library, it was very chill. I just need to walk around the library and check things are all right. And in that time, I was doing a lot of reading and a lot of learning. I started learning about two things, psychology, and business and marketing. I would read books at work. I would read books out of work. I would take digital marketing courses online as well. And this is what I jumped into. And I just dived straight into this. And I started reading books like the four hour work week, the four hour work week, as everyone says, it did change my life. It did get me a lot more excited. It did get me used to these numbers like 50 K a month, 20 K a month, hundred K a month. These numbers to me, I didn't really understand that that's possible. But someone who described himself as coming from a normal background, Tim Ferriss, who wrote The 4-Hour Work Week, he was saying how this is possible. And not only it's possible, but it's possible to have other people manage it for you and you can work four hours a week. So that was a really big book for my mindset and understanding the potential of what's out there. So I was learning digital marketing. This is the key thing. I wasn't just dreaming. I was learning something specific and that was digital marketing. And I didn't even limit it to any type of digital marketing. I was learning about content. I was learning about social media management. I was learning about advertising. I was learning about lead magnets and funnels and all of this stuff. The only thing I think I never really learned is SEO, search engine optimization. But I was just gaining these skills. And at the same time, I was learning about what drives the human mind. I was learning about psychology just from my own curiosity, but that actually leans in very well with like copywriting and sales psychology. So that helped me as well when it came to business. And after a year of doing this, I was like on the ball. I knew what I was talking about. I understood some good concepts, but I didn't have experience. So when a friend of mine reached out to me and said, I've got a friend who's starting a business. Maybe you could help him. Maybe I could link you guys up. I offered to help the guy. And I don't know why this was, but he was living in a different city to me in the UK. And for some reason I said, I'll come and help you and be a consultant for you. I just want you to pay my travel costs and food. So I actually was willing to kind of charge for it. And I don't know where I got that from, but I think that was pretty cool that at that age and having no experience, I was willing to do that. I, d I really don't know where that came from. So I went and I helped him. All I did was I took what I'd been reading and I applied it to his business idea. And we had some really cool ideas coming out of that. One of the main ones was that I said, this idea you have for an e-commerce physical product business, I said, instead of going to China and ordering a thousand units, just make a few in your house. Whatever you can grab from eBay, put together and see if people will buy the concept of it. Not the quality of it or how polished it is, how well it is put together, but just the concept of it. Will people buy that? And that was one of the best things I think I advised the guy on. He followed it, mashallah, and the sales kicked off straight away. And that was clear validation that this was a business that had some demand for it. Ultimately, I helped this brother again and again, and I ended up constantly working with him around two, three years. I was working with him on this e-commerce business, and it ended up becoming Muslim Box Co. So that's a business that actually is still around today. 
ultimately I separated from that project, but it was a really good experience because now all the learning I was doing, I was applying it. And guess what? I was applying it for free. I didn't take one pound out of that business. Eventually, because I was helping so much, I was treating it like my own business, but I had no ownership in it, no profit share in it, and I was not paid anything for it. But I was just applying what I learned and getting real life experience. I was running thousands of pounds of ads and getting real sales and trying to optimize the funnel and the sales page and the product page and the email follow-ups. I was doing all of that stuff. Why? Because I was trying to learn and gain experience and see what results I can really get for myself. And now because I was helping so much, after about a year, the brother actually offered me to own part of the business and I took him up on that. So I ended up owning part of that business because of the work that I put in without asking for anything in return. And that's a real lesson that you can take is that in the early days, just focus on learning skills and applying them and getting experience. Even if you're not making money, the thing to optimize at the beginning for is experience, skills, and that confidence that I've done this job and I got results. And therefore later I can charge for it. You don't have to charge from day one. Something that I like to do and I advise people to do sometimes is even if you're gonna do work for free, send them an invoice and just add a discount to it. So let's say you're gonna help someone with their Facebook ads, say it's a thousand pounds a month, but add a discount on the invoice and say a thousand pound discount, right? And just make them feel some sort of value to what you're offering and have a journey to where eventually you can make money off it. But in the first days, just get experience and just get some real results under your belt. Remember, if you're 20 or 18 or 23, you've got a lot of time to build this up before you really need to make money off it. And if I told you that you're gonna invest three, four years into a skill, into experience, that's ultimately gonna build a dream business and lifestyle for you, wouldn't you say that's a good trade to make? Of course it is. We invest three years, four years, five years into university, and then we're not even promised a great lifestyle after that. We're not even promised a job, right? Maybe a lot of us do get jobs after that, but are they amazing jobs? Are they like dream jobs? They're not dream jobs most of the time. But these businesses that we're talking about, even if it's not a dream business and lifestyle in the beginning, one, two, three, four years after that, it can definitely develop into that. So this is something that is worth investing a lot into, a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort. It's fully worth investing in. This is a lifelong skill and a lifelong benefit that you're gonna get from it. So I remember I moved from the UK back to the UAE. I just wanted to live in a less comfortable environment where I'm not with my parents. And it did help me definitely. And I was fully just on my grind. I remember I didn't have a job, I wasn't studying. Just like day to night, I was learning about business, learning about marketing and applying it. I was applying it in the e-commerce business and I was like, just kept learning. I was doing these courses. I remember I did courses on digitalmarketer.com. I did a lot of different certifications there. I was in their membership site, which had a Facebook group attached to it. All the members went into that Facebook group and that was where I met a friend who ultimately became a really good friend of mine, business guy. And I used to give him advice as well, actually, on his Facebook ads. When he was making like 300K a month, I would actually be advising him. And so I felt that I got that experience and that confidence from speaking to that friend and having that friendship with that brother. So I was just fully engaged. It was at that point where I still had the e-commerce business, but it was not going so well. My dreams for that business kind of went down a little bit and I started Amazon FBA. So I knew a lot of people, especially this brother that I just mentioned, he was doing Amazon FBA, he was doing really well. So I jumped into that. I took the money that I'd saved from that basic job and I put it into Amazon FBA with a friend of mine and we tried our best. We bought a course, we followed the course exactly. And ultimately it was like, okay, like we needed to keep putting money into it to restock and to give free units away for reviews. That's what we used to do back in the day. And we needed a lot of money to keep putting into that. And I ran out of money. I didn't have any money coming in, only money going out. So it got to a point where I was like, maybe I need to move on from this. Uh, it was an experience. I think ultimately our products were not the best choices. They were just okay choices. And so we needed to put more money into it and I wasn't willing to do that. So what I did though was I sold the business to another friend who wanted something that was already set up and he could just run with it. So I sold it to him and I actually got half the money that I put into it, I got that back. So that was my second or third kind of, so I had the ebook that I was trying to sell. I had the e-commerce company that I was helping the friend. I had the e-commerce company that I was helping the brother with. And then I started Amazon FBA. So I had run three businesses. I'd started three businesses. And I think each one I really put my all into. I put a lot of hours into each one of these. Time was not an issue. I was not thinking about ROI, return on investment. I was just putting the hours in and I enjoyed learning and I enjoyed taking what I'd learned and applying it in real life. But then reality here, I really want to get married. I was like 24, 25 at this point. I want to start making money. Like I've delayed making money for so long because I didn't want a job. 
And now this business stuff is not working out. I never felt down about it. I never felt bad. I was always trying to remind myself to be grateful to Allah. And I learned a little bit about Allah and his names and attributes and how that we should always assume the best of Allah, that something good is coming from this down period. And I was always trying to pray in the masjid and making my dua and doing my earth card. And I was trying my best and I think that really held me down. So that's another lesson and tip I would give is always be grateful. Even if you feel so low, like your job is rubbish, or you're trying business, it's not working out straight away. Always, always be grateful to Allah no matter what. And always remember that Allah can make anything happen and you have to turn to Allah. This was a big thing that kept me grounded. And so with my dad's voice in my ear, I finally decided that I would actually go and get a job. That I'd got some marketing experience. Let me see if I can go and get a marketing job. It's actually a skill I have and I have some experience with it. So I think I can go and actually have that confidence to get a job in an office and actually perform really well. I'd proven to myself that I can do some good work in this. So let me go try it out. And I need this ultimately, even if I want to do business eventually, I need a job right now. I need some money. I need to get married. Let me get started. Let me not delay my whole life just because I'm trying to force business to work out for me. I bit the bullet. I started applying for jobs in Dubai and Alhamdulillah, I got a few interviews. And all of this, remember, is based on my own self-taught education on marketing and my own experiences of just going to brothers and helping them out and starting an FBA business and stuff like that. No formal job experience with marketing. But subhanAllah, I got three interviews and the final one, they gave me an offer. And to me, the offer was like, good. I was like, yeah, that's all right. I moved to Dubai to work for one of the biggest online businesses over there. And it was like a full on office, everything. There was like probably a hundred staff or between 50 and a hundred staff over there. We had a lot of different people in the team. And I was taken on as a marketing person. Actually, the official role was social media manager. But I think they, they didn't really know what they were talking about marketing-wise. So I ended up running ads. Although social media marketing usually is just the content side of things. So I came on. I was like, look, this is not going to cause a problem for me and my business. I'm going to get a job and work the job. This job is going to be a learning experience. They're paying me. That's a bonus. My main salary from this job is learning and experience and just giving myself some money so that I can live life and continue and like have some dignity and maybe get married while I work on my business. So my goal was go do this job, apply all this stuff I'd be learning, apply it again in a job with much higher levels of responsibility, much higher levels of ad spend that I could spend. And ultimately they had all the products ready. It was just my job to come and help them sell it. I remember going and starting that job and I started to listen to the audio book of seven habits of highly effective people for the third time. I thought, I know this book, this is an amazing book. Let me listen to it again and apply what I'm learning and what I learned from it in this job. Now this job is real life. All that psychology and self-help and business stuff that I've been learning, I can now apply this wherever possible. But it didn't quite work out well. I was very naive. I did not have a strong sense of emotional intelligence. I didn't know how politics work at jobs. I thought they were just hiring me to do a great job marketing wise and make them more money than they're paying me. I guess I saw myself as a freelancer coming in as a mercenary to do a great job. But it does not work like that, as you know. What it works like is you have to suck up to the manager. You have to do what the manager says. You can't have your own ideas. You just have to follow, at least for the first year or something, just follow what you're told and do it. I was not good at that. I was so naive. I did not understand that saying no to the manager or saying like that's not the right way in your first few weeks of the job was not a good idea. And so within six weeks, I was actually fired. Now, when I went into the HR manager's office, and she sat down, and she's Algerian, by the way, she stabbed me in the back. She told me you're fired. I, I got a tightness in my chest. But then she followed that by saying that we don't think you're bad at this job. We just think you're better off working by yourself and not in a company. When she said that, that was the green light for me to go all in on business. And so I remember I left the Airbnb that I was renting in Dubai because I was not there long term yet. I just worked there for a few weeks and I was still looking for a place to rent. I left the Airbnb, I packed everything up. I drove back to where my parents lived in the UAE and I was feeling great. I actually remember I called up my friend, we went and we had a meal for a celebration because I was like, that job kind of sucked. All the politics was boring, annoying. And I realized I know more about marketing than I thought I did. 
And also she gave me the green light by saying, you're probably better off doing your own thing. And so these two brothers that I'd worked with on the e-commerce company back in the day, I spoke to them and we decided we would start a marketing agency together. We're all really into marketing and learning and self-development. And so we said, yeah, we know about marketing. Let's go and do this as a service for companies. So the first client, I remember, we made an agreement between the three of us and uh, we didn't set up a company, nothing like that. We're like, let's just get money in. Let's just go and make some sales. So we went to our personal contacts and we got our first client. I remember feeling intimidated by that. They were paying us 800 pounds a month and I was feeling like, wow, this is real pressure now. We have to perform. But at the same time, I eased that fear by thinking, I've got this course. I've got this course, which is teaching me exactly what to do to apply to this guy's business to help him. So all I'm gonna do is watch that course again and then apply it. And I took the pressure off me by just thinking of it as he's paying me to implement that course. And even he knew about the course, but he was fine with just paying us to do that. So that was our first client. And the first year was quite rocky. We were making like a few thousand pounds a month. Like for some people, that's amazing at the beginning. And trust me, yes, the first 800 pound that comes in for your own business. I never made that much money before. Like I never made profit from Amazon. I never made profit from the e-commerce business. But this 800 pounds that came in, in theory, like that was all profit. We could split that between the three of us and we'd actually make real money for once. So that was a great start. But over the first year, we had hundreds or thousands of pounds per month in revenue. Nothing crazy. And I was just like biding my time and saying, look, we're going to make this work. I remember we didn't know how to have like effective meetings. So we would sometimes spend three, four hours on a meeting every week because we were just not good at keeping these brief and having a structure to a meeting. So we were learning all kinds of things. It was in the second year when things really took off and we started to make over 10,000 pounds a month. And we started to get paid really well because we had a high profit business. We didn't have many employees. We didn't have many costs. We didn't have an office bill. And so things were going pretty well. We started to take on a lot of different clients. And that was our mistake ultimately with this agency model that we didn't specialize. We would just take on clients in any category, any industry, offering any service that we knew about. So we would do social media management, we would do email marketing, we would do funnel for you, we would run your ads for you, Google ads, Facebook ads, anything. If you gave us money, we would do it for you. And ultimately that meant we were not amazing at anything. And so now if I think back to that, I kind of wish that we were stricter and more disciplined on ourselves to really say no to certain money coming in, but yes, only to specific industries. So for example, right now, I could say that I could go and do an agency which would only help info product businesses do webinars, webinar funnels. That's it. Only one service to only one type of business. And I would go out and I would do that really, really well. I would be the top person in that game for webinar funnels for info products. That's all I would do if I was to start out today. So that business, that agency, after about two, three years, we decide to move more to training and consulting. So we start to do the course and coaching and consulting combined. And we just adapted that over time. And that's what we're doing today. Ultimately, we're training people on how to start their own knowledge business. What's a knowledge business? It is a service business like an agency or a coaching business like helping people to lose weight. Or it's a course business like teaching them how to meal prep or how to cook or any courses you can think of. So one of these three businesses, they all have a lot of great things in common. That's why they come under the same umbrella as a knowledge business. And Alhamdulillah, we've been able to do millions of dollars in revenue from this business. And ultimately, it's helped me to feel confidence in myself, to get married, to be able to travel, to be able to move to Turkey from the UAE and live here and pay my rent and everything here. And Alhamdulillah, the life of business when it's done the right way, with the right things in mind, going back to those principles from the four hour work week of being able to choose what your work is, where you work and who you work with. This is the best thing. And that's why when you start a business, you want to think of what the end is. What's the objective with this business? Because you could start a certain type of business, which will ultimately require you to work 50, 60 hours every week, no matter what happens with it. And you might be making a ton of money from it, but you don't have that freedom. Whereas our business, we always had in mind that we want a certain amount of freedom. And so we designed it that way from the beginning and all the decisions we were making were based on that. So now we've grown that company. We now have four staff working for us and Alhamdulillah shows that we can actually make quite a good amount of revenue without needing loads of staff. And that's if you pick the right business. So now Alhamdulillah, I feel quite accomplished with my business. I'm confident in advising other people on business and helping them. And I've actually felt confident enough to now go and start the front row, which is my second business. I was always very focused. And I said to myself, I cannot do anything while I have this business going. As that first business grew and grew and we were able to hire people and they took strain off me, 
that was when I said, okay, now I will allow myself to add one more focus, if you like, the second business, which is something that you can say I'm much more passionate about. It's something that really comes from the heart of helping Muslim men to level up in their health, wealth, relationship with Allah, and ultimately to be leaders for the Ummah. So I'm really passionate about that. And a lot of my business skills are really handy when it comes to doing this. I mean, this is a business, the front row, but also when I help other people, charities or advise people, I'm able to do that because I guess of Allah's help, Allah helped us so much and kept us firm. And there were decisions we could have made where I might be saying at a job right now, but Alhamdulillah, Allah helped us so much. And we just kept making dua to Allah and keep having that patience and keep knowing the goal and not compromising on the principles of what where you want to get. Being flexible in the small things, but with the big things, like really try and stay disciplined and solid. So that's how I got to where I am now. Yes, I've got some experience under my belt, but there's still so many more levels I can reach. So let's see where I end up. I've got a very clear vision now, alhamdulillah. And as you can see, I don't think there was any magic or big advantage that I had in life to get here. In fact, I was always somebody who was very negative. I had a lot of doubts in myself. I had low confidence, but somehow Allah helped me. And one big thing that I always invested in that helped me so much was education, self-education, learning, reading books, taking courses, asking other people for advice, and mixing with successful people in whatever field it is through the audio books, through the podcasts, through the books themselves. And I remember when I was working in the library, I was reading so many business books that the idea of making $100,000 a month, it kind of became normal to me. And that's what happens when you expose yourself to things again and again. And finally, the biggest piece of advice I can give you is always keep things halal. Don't ever compromise your values, your principles, what Allah would be pleased with to make money. Because your risk is written, but how you will go about getting that risk, getting that wealth, that is up to you. And you can make a right decision or a wrong decision, which will ultimately have consequences in the akhirah. So always take the principled path. Even when we're advertising for people, there were some things that we had to avoid and some things we just had to be straight up with. And ultimately we expect that Allah rewarded us for that and put barakah in the business because of that. So always stay principled. Don't even question that. We don't have to flip flop and not have trust because we have Allah and we believe that Allah will provide for us. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said, I do not fear for you, meaning the ummah. I do not fear for you poverty. I fear that the whole dunya will be given to you. That's actually what I fear for you. So keep that in mind that we need to actually stay on guard when it comes to the dunya. And we just have to put the work in, trust in Allah, be grateful and keep going. And I expect that I'm going to hear from some of you guys that you've actually done it as well. So that was my journey in business. Now, I don't know what next video you would like to watch, but YouTube thinks the video on screen now would be good for you. So go ahead and watch that and see what I have to say there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.